uh, the University of Brighton. And we're based here in the Freeman Centre and it's shared with a group um, who are based at Sussex called SPRU, who are a science policy research unit. And this is a quite an unusual building because it's designed initially to co-host both groups, both of whom work in innovation studies, and so it's formed probably the largest single group of innovation researchers in Europe and possibly the world. But my main theme of research now is looking at user-led innovation, primarily in high technology type products and services. Really, innovation studies is trying to understand the way in which new things are made and are brought into widespread use. So innovation usually contains two elements, the invention stage, and lots of people invent things, and then bringing those things into widespread use, so millions of people or thousands of people will use them around the world. What we tend to look at in the, late, in the current research is to look at innovations that have been developed and led and popularised by individual users. To give you a good example is um, digital music. Digital music has really been user-led, not industry-led, and industry has been dragged along behind this, but it's not really been an industry-led initiative. Really, it's been um, technology that's been en enabled users to recreate how they want to consume music. I think it's very interesting, when we were trying to understand what this phenomenon was, what this research was really all about, was realised that in fact many of the ideas were not coming from firms, they were coming from individual users. And not only were they coming from individual users, the users themselves were doing things they really shouldn't have been doing. So they were breaking the law, uh, the copyright law, intellectual property law, in some shape or form. And in doing so, came up with some very, very different things that hadn't really been thought of and, and probably wouldn't be thought of in a commercial context. What we've tried to look at is how that, those ideas are then picked up by companies and drawn back into the mainstream commercial process. The research that we're going to be looking at over the next, you know, the near term, probably the three to five years, is really trying to understand what hidden innovation means in practice. To give you a bit of background, innovation really is considered in, in the literature and in policy terms about how you run a country and an economy that you, you measure things like intellectual property, um, copyright, um, patents, you measure things like R&D spending. And these are traditional ways of doing this and there are lots of very clever people who do um, lots of detailed statistical analysis on this. That's fine, however it doesn't really examine user-led initiatives that are sim having similarly fundamental changes on the world. I think the trends that are going to be uh, that are going to coming out in future years are really more of what we've seen. We're just beginning to see what happened, what's begun to happen with the internet and how communities can have big impacts. Open source is really communities of individuals doing things because they want to do them in the, in the same way that people want to remix music because they want to. It's an artistic hobby type activity. So there's a whole swathe of, of, of innovation happening out there that will just get more and more and more uh, important in the same way that with Facebook and iPhone have tried to draw in individuals that'll be far more important than it, than it is currently. What that means in terms of who gets the value of that activity that's also going to be uh, far more interesting as well.